Tell us come as you are. Uh, before I start on that, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for those gathered here this morning, Lord, and I just pray that you uh, uh, bring more unto us as we uh, feed the word and the spirit to them, Lord, and, and they have ears to hear and a heart to receive and, and to come and to keep, be a part of you, be a part of your body, Lord, and, and take part in the service to God as, as was meant to be. We love you so much. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So come as you are. And I'm hoping we get some to walk in and just come as they are. And the title says it all. Uh, but we're going to elaborate on that a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by coming out of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. And I'll, I'll probably, I'm going to jump around different books of the Bible, so bear with me. Uh, I'll give you time to look. Uh, Jeremiah's not sure where it's at. You find Isaac, you know it's right after Isaac. Or not Isaiah, I said Isaac. Isaiah, I'm sorry. It's right after Isaiah. And then you have Jeremiah. Uh, like I said, chapter 1, verse 5. What it says here in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Am I there yet? So I've got the apps and got the Bibles. I'm using my Bible. Books and it's one of the <laughs> one of the bigger ones in the Old Testament there. Mine with the exception of Psalms and whatnot. But, uh, um, chapter one verse five says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Well, come as you are. Uh, and, and he says, you know, these words here, what they do here in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 is these words assure us, they assure us that God chose us. And not only did he choose us, but he's always there for us. Um, and, and lets us know that we were set apart for his work. Uh, we're a prophet unto nations, he says. And what is a prophet? A prophet is a spokesman of God. He knew us before, before we, were, we even grew in the womb. Before you were even in the belly, he says, I knew you. He had a plan. Before we were formed, he had a plan for us. And he still does. You ask the question, uh, who am I? You know, a lot of people ask, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And I'm telling you that God knows who you are. And that's all that matters. Is how important to him you are. He knows who you are. And he's got a plan for you. And he's got a purpose for you. So come as you are. Come as you are and get to know your creator. And when I say get to know your creator and come as you are, is don't try to come with somebody else. Don't be envious of anyone else. Don't compare yourself to somebody else that God made. Uh, 
because God doesn't make mistakes. And he never made a mistake in here. Uh, I want to I reference off this as well as far as uh, not comparing yourself. You go to Romans chapter 9 verse 20. Romans chapter 9 verse 20. Of, you know, some of them Hollywood actors, or you know, maybe somebody down the street. You know, I, I wish was, I was a, a, athletic, or I wish I was a smart. But God made you who you are, and He gave you your own gift and your own talent. Nothing. Nothing. You know, maybe just haven't figured it out yet. Have you gone to God and asked Him, Lord? What is my gift? What is my talent? And we, I tell you, a gift that we all have, if, if we all come to know him, and that's giving the gift of Christ to somebody else. In uh, Romans 9.20, it says, uh, Nay, but, but O man, who, who art thou that repliest against God, who are you that replies against God? Shall the thing form to him that, that formed it? So you're saying to your creator, why did you make me? Why did you make me? Why couldn't you have made me this? So stop comparing yourself. You're, you know, because we're all made uh, for a different function. We're all made for a different function. We have the same purpose to carry his word to others, but we're all made for a different function. And what I mean is he's the potter and we're the clay. And you know, one pot he, he makes to carry water. Another pot he makes to carry refuge. You know, so we, we all have different functions. Uh, but he made you from the same, he made you all from the same material. You have a different function, but he made you from the same material. But possibly a different shape. It depends on what your intended function is. So trust in him because you are his workmanship. We're set apart for whatever life and purpose that he has for us. But we're all called to witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come as you are. Come as a creation of God. Don't rebel against him or separate yourself from him by thinking that you've sinned too great or that you have not dressed properly. You know, because the only way that you can dress improper is not wanting to be covered in Christ. The only dressing that God requires is that you're covered in Jesus Christ. He don't care if you come to church in rags or a suit as long as you're covered in Jesus Christ. You know, and uh, to sin great, thinking that you may have sinned too great, but uh, the only way you can sin too great is by separating yourself from Jesus Christ. Because that's the greatest sin of all. Anything else has been buried outside of him. John 6.37, uh, this is one that we went over last night. John chapter 6, verse 37. John 36, you say? No, John chapter 6, verse 37. What it says here, it says, uh, 
all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Remember we hit that, hit that up last night. He's not going to cast you out. So come as you are. And that's worried, like I said, again, you know, worried that when they come that they're going to be immediately judged and cast into hell the moment they step foot in the church. That's, no. My goodness, like I said before, there's some in here that you know, you don't know everybody in here. We don't know you. You don't know us. I mean, a lot of men here probably caused a greater sin than you have. And you know what? God uses each and every one of us. He's got a purpose for each and every one of us. So come as you are. You're not going to be rejected. But Jesus Christ welcomes you with open arms. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 I said we'll be jumping around so bear with me Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Uh, though they be red like crimson, they shall be made. Now she, they, they shall be as wool. You know, a wool being white. Uh, so no, no matter how bad your sin is, He's inviting you to come so that, that that way that sin can be cleansed in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ. Because if those sins are cleansed through Jesus Christ, he says he can make them white as snow. In other words, you can be made perfect, holy, and blameless in the eyes of God because God doesn't have to look upon that sin. He doesn't have to see that crimson of, you know, of how bad that sin is because with Jesus Christ, the, the only one who's ever been perfect has made you clean. Well, it says, let's reason together. Yes. Reason together, I mean, coming and gathering as a body. Just as you would talk in court with Christ being right there as that lawyer, you know, defending us against the Father. As long as you call upon him to be your lawyer. <laughs> so, I, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, now the next thing I want to, next uh, verse I want to hit up is uh, Revelations very last chapter in Revelation 22, verse 17. Should be the last page of your Bible. Revelation 22, 17. The very last page of your Bible. That should be easy to find. What it, what it says here in 17, it says, In the spirit, in the bride, they say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that 
is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely so here you see a, a threefold invite you see a threefold invite you know a full grace you know is uttered by the spirit saying come uh, the bride saying come and then those who have heard saying come and, and any that haven't heard if you haven't heard if, if you're a thirst if you're thirsty come you know because Jesus is the cure for spiritual hunger and thirst and this uh, this also is in line with John 4 uh, if you're not familiar in John chapter 4 is where Jesus talks with the Samaritan woman at the well and he said if you drink the water that I give you will thirst no more because I give the water I give that every, everlasting water you know, that water of life uh, he provides that living water so that way you don't have to thirst anymore. So come as you are. But come. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 it says and such were some of you that ye are washed that ye are sanctified that ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God so the greatest proof of a new birth is a change to life The moment you come out of those waters, you're sealed in the love of God. You're a new birth, a new creature under Christ Jesus. And you've been washed clean and set apart for service to God. And you're made perfect, holy, and blameless. Why would you walk away from any of that? Why would you walk away from your creator after he did all that for you? The one that gave you everything. Why would you go back and live as if nothing has changed? God covered you with Jesus. <coughs> He covered you with Jesus so that you no longer have to be naked or exposed. My sins are gone and washed away. I'm still a sinner. But Jesus took all that out of the sight of God. You know, I mean, you're wearing new clothes. You get to strut, strut around in Jesus. He gave you something new to wear. And that's the way you need to walk. You need to walk as a child of God. You need to walk in Christ. If you're going to go through these waters and be sealed in the love of God, 
then you need to live your life as if something has changed because that's why you came in the first place because everything in your life was well it was you're perishing you're perishing you know in this world it says those believe in Jesus Christ so you don't have to perish that's what it says you know, your life wasn't going the way you wanted it before, so you came to Jesus for something to change. And, you know, so if you go through there, why are you going to get up and live, live as if nothing has changed? It has changed because now you have Christ. Like I said, he gave you, you know, he, he's right there with you. You're wearing him everywhere you go. So you're not naked or exposed before before God because all he can see is Jesus everywhere you go praise the Lord Amen. Romans 12 1 and 2 Romans chapter 12 so I keep stepping away from the mic a little bit I'm hoping this all gets picked up. I have a habit of doing that sometimes. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Anybody who's ever in knows that a NCO would always get after you. Put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> um, all right, so Roman, Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service? You can't do that by yourself. You cannot present this, you know, that sacrifice unto God by yourself. Like I said, you need to be wearing Jesus so that he can even look upon you. Uh, it says, uh, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, you have to change your mind. You have to change your way of thinking you have to change your way of living because it wasn't working for you before. You came to Jesus to change. So live as if something's changed. Because before, nothing was working for you. And then if you go on living the same way, saying, well, Jesus wasn't working for me, and when you never, you know, you never made that change. You gotta, you gotta give give Jesus more than just a couple hours. You have to give Jesus every single day. You have to give yourself up to Him because you're His. Where we are, His, a gift from God to Him, and He stands before the Father as, as our you know as our lawyer, saying this one's okay, Dad. And we're down here, we're as His uh, spokesman. You know, saying, you go around and sharing him, letting people know that Jesus is the only way to get to the Father. Let them know that they're perishing and they're going to end up in a devil's hell if they don't get to Jesus now and change their mind, change their way of living. Because obviously, it's not working out for them. You know what I mean? So give it to Jesus. Uh, Give, give, give to God, you know, go to get to service for him. You know, that's why he made you. Don't conform to this world. Don't conform to this world. Because this world, it holds no guarantees. God's got a guarantee. He says, through my son, Jesus Christ, 
I guarantee you that you are going to have everlasting life. But you've got to change your mind and seek Jesus. Where's he at? He's in his gathered body of believers. And, he's, and as I said last night, he's not only in his gathered body of believers, but as a part of that body, you carry Jesus in your heart everywhere you go so that you can share him with somebody else. Because whenever Jesus, you know, he holds all that love of God within himself and he parts it out to everyone else. And he, what, he did, what he does, he gives you part of himself. Here, here's you some Jesus. Here's you some Jesus. Come as you are. To conform to anything, be conformed to the image of Christ. And if you look at, look at Romans 8.29, should just be back a couple pages. 8.29 says, uh, for, whom, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So because he knew you before you were formed, he chose you in Christ Jesus. And we all have a role to play in God's plan. And some of y'all out there watching, you may be shaking your heads, but you have a role in God's plan. And he says, uh, be like my son, Jesus Christ. You may not be a teacher. You may not be one of hospitality. And I tell you what each and every one of us are, we are ones to go out and share Jesus Christ with people that we meet. We are all, we are all ones to go out and share Christ and change the life of somebody else. Not, not us, but Jesus Christ, that Spirit, Holy Spirit, changed the life of that person. Just simply by telling them that you love him and love them and that Jesus Christ loves them, uh, might change their whole day. I shouldn't say might. It will change their whole day because Jesus brings nothing but joy. Amen. But to be like Jesus Christ, which is God's Son, who is the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Christ is the firstborn among many of the brothers and sisters. So be like Christ. And to be like Christ, well, you're going to have to be knowledgeable of him. You're going to have to find out, out everything you can about this man, not just the facts, but the, but the love, the grace, the sincerity. You know, uh, and you do, you do that and you become knowledgeable in the body of Christ. So we invite you and implore you to come and be a part of us. And pray to God, come as you are. Wherever he places you, come as you are. And when I say wherever he places you, uh, I want you to be a part of us. You know, that's for sure. I, I invite you here to Pioneer Bible Fellowship. Like I said, right here at the corner of 576 and R, you know, I gave you the times and everything at the beginning of the service. I invite you to come be a part of us. But it's God who places you. And, and I tell you, if y'all want to know uh, what the scripture to back that up, look in 1 Corinthians 12, 18. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. What it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, it says, uh, But now hath God, God set the members, every one of them in a body. He set the members, every one of them in a body of Christ. And that, if you were you too, you set me in a body of Christ. Uh, 
you know, pray to him, you know, find out where that body's at. It may not be us, it may be another body of Christ. You know, but I'm inviting you, if you don't have a body, come check us out, please. You know, because we're not going to bring anything but Jesus. But it says, he places them in a body of Christ as it hath pleased him. Not as it pleases you, not as it pleases your friends or anybody else, but as it pleases God. <coughs> because he's going to put you where you're going to do the most good. Because he's got a plan for you. In his specific body. You know, and if you're listening, if you're listening, you know, I mean, hear Jesus. Because he's calling. You know, he's calling and he's saying, come as you are and be service to Jesus. Conform to Christ, not as the world. I love y'all. Uh, we have cookies. Uh, we have apple bread. And we have coffee and water. Y'all come. You ain't going to go hungry or thirsty. You have the spirit feeding you, and we'll feed you too. Yes. Thank you, Steve.